you back and say, oh, oh God Almighty, I'm trusting you to buy me a car. I'm trusting you to help me, but the money hasn't come. And God will tell you, I gave you opportunity. But you couldn't see. Because while you are back, you have not developed ability to use opportunity. We are beginning today with the Sunday clinic and we are focusing on mental strength through mental discipline. Somebody say mental strength. Say mental strength through mental discipline. And I hear you say that again, mental strength. Say it again, mental strength through what? Mental discipline. I pray that the Holy Ghost be your imparter today. Be the one that will impart that strength into you mentally. You will not fail in life. You will never fail in your marriage. You will never fail in your destiny. Somebody say louder, amen. amen. Say by the Holy Spirit this morning. Say by the Holy Ghost this morning. I will receive impartation of mental strength through mental discipline. Can I hear your amen? Amen. amen. Let me say something quickly about discipline before I go into mental discipline. Number one, your future. Say my future. My future depends, amen, on my vision. Say it again. My future depends on my vision, on my dreams. Amen. Hallelujah. The morning of your life is where you have your vision. It is at your beginning. The Lord gives you vision. He gives you a dream. And there is a dream, there is a destiny attached to every one of you. When Samson was born, what he would be was already written down. The same with every great man of God. So if somebody really, really, really wants to help your future, they should be looking into your past. I said it before, anybody in this world who is telling you to not remember where you began from is not a friend of your destiny, of your future. There are many things we'll say today in this world that is not really in, founded in the Holy Scripture. And no many of us have heard this saying, God help those who help themselves. That is not really, really true. But it looks like truth. It looks like something that is true, but is not true. It's not founded in the scripture. There are so many things that people see all over the world that are not founded in the truth. They are a form of lies, but they are kind of truthful. A form of truth and the essence of all of that is to derail you. Is to derail you. And so if your spirit is not strong and you don't know your word, you get carried away by such things. So I've heard people say many times, say many times, forget about your past. Look into your future. I, I understand what they are trying to say. What they are trying to say that there are things in your past you must forget. You must forget the failures. You must forget what Satan has done and look forward to what God is doing. But here you mean there are things in your past you can never forget. They are your memoir. They are your beginning. They are your vision. They are your dreams. Your, your the future, God usually declares the very end from the beginning. So at the very beginning, you will see the end in it. And that is your vision. And that is your dream. That is your morning, and they are very vital. And God wants you to always say that before you. So when God uh, met with Joshua, every time they had a testimony, they had an altar, God will ask them to build an altar in the place of encounter. And I will say this storm, raise it off a memorial for your children to follow. 
That is the reason why we have the Holy Scripture. The things that were written at all time are good for our future that we might learn through them. Somebody say in the name of Jesus to my future. My future is in my vision. Say it again. Say my future. Say I have a future. Say I have a future is in my vision. Is in your dream. Amen. And is in your beginning. May the Lord uphold that in Jesus' name. And let me say this again to you. Every future, if you're going to ever see that future come to pass, your faith has to create it. There are three things that your future depends on. Your faith. Say my faith, my strength, and then your ability to seize and engage opportunities. Those three things. Your future depends on the faith that you build today. It's today's faith that guarantees you will make your future happen. So God wants you and me to build faith today so you can make your future happen. And two, to build strength so you can withstand whatever will attack your future. And then to have to build abilities, divine abilities, so when opportunity comes your way, you can engage and use them. Many opportunities to engage and make a life better have been wasted. They have been lost. They have been thrown away because people are taking today for granted. They are taking today for granted. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say my, my future depends on the faith that I build today. Say my faith today will make my future to happen. Say amen. My faith today will make your future happen. Don't just sit down there writing vision, writing dream, build faith. Because your faith today is needed to make your future happen. And then two, the strength that you build today is needed for you to stand tomorrow. You must be strength today. Say strength, say faith, say ability to engage opportunities. Say amen. Say louder, amen. So don't forget those two things. And listen to me, those two things depend heavily on the kind of mental discipline that you possess. Those three things you fit, you build today, many are wasting today because of indiscipline mentally. So today I'm going to teach you on how to be impacted by the Holy Ghost, I mean mental discipline by the Holy Ghost. You need it. Your faith that you are going to need tomorrow, built today, depends on how disciplined you are mentally. Say amen. The strength you need for tomorrow, to be able to stand tomorrow, you will need to stand tomorrow. You need that strength built today. It's not when the wind comes, you start to build strength. No, strength is built to engage, to stand, to withstand, to withstand. And those strengths are built now. So what your tomorrow will be is already being built right now. Future is today. Amen. You, 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 hold, you take hold of your future today. What you'll be in five years' time is decided right now. So you've got to focus on how to be fit that will make your future happen. And two, to be strength to withstand whatever will come your way tomorrow. And then three, to develop abilities to see opportunities, engage them, and use them. Opportunities will happen to everybody. But that is a guarantee that your future will happen. 
If you don't have the ability today, you will waste it, you will throw it away, and you keep on complaining that God is not blessing you. It will come your way, it will come your way, but if you don't know how to use it well, you will waste it. And then you turn around and say, God has him blessed you. God has blessed everybody and will bless everybody. But those opportunities are a link to your vision. They are a link to your destiny. You must take it in Jesus' name. And that is why you build the ability today. You must. And all these three depends on your mental, on your discipline. But mental discipline is very vital. Somebody quickly open to Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. In that place, you will see very clearly what God, what, what uh, Solomon was trying to tell us. Amen. If you are there, open Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. Amen. I returned and I saw under the sun. I return and I saw under the sun that the race is not for the swift. The race is not for the swift. Mind you, it's talking about human strength, human abilities. That the race is not because you are swift. It's telling you because you are swift doesn't mean you are going to win a race. And you all know that. That has happened to some of you. You were swift, but you didn't win the race. And he said the battle, you don't win the battle because you are strong. You can go to the gym and build a lot of strength. It doesn't make you win the battle. And you yourself know you've seen all of these Western, uh, these WWE, all these vowed. You see the guy with his strength and muscles, and they still lose. You see very great footballers, good team, they still lose. They play 90 minutes, they play better than everybody else, but they still lose. And he said, Why wisdom does not give you bread? He's talking about human wisdom. It means you go to university, you go to college, it doesn't mean you'll be rich. He said, Why wisdom does not give it's not talking about God's kind of wisdom, but it's talking about human human, human abilities, human benefits. That if all you are running for because you want to have bread, hear the story of those who have graduated with 10 flying colors. They are engineers today, wise in all of this stuff, who taught you mathematics. They are still very broke. There are many teachers have raised millionaires who are the fathers of great millionaires today. They are wiser than them, but they are still broke. Somebody will say, oh, come and show me your father. Then. No, it's not true. It's not true. Those scriptures are not really, those adage or psychological statements are not correct. They are not founded in the word. They are not founded in the word. Somebody said, oh, uh, if, you, if you are a, a rat, you can't give back to an elephant. Listen, many rats are giving back to elephants. Yeah. Your teacher was a rat. He still broke. But they taught you in high school mathematics. Amen. So don't, don't, oh, but all those, they sound true, but they are not really true. They sound good. It's, uh, so it's, that's why you don't, unless you are grounded in the world, there are many things that are actually really true that men, men say, but they are the deception. The Bible says Satan deceived the entire world. And it doesn't deceive you by telling you lie, it tells you have truth. Amen. So wisdom doesn't give you bread. And he said, because you have skills doesn't mean you have favor. Because you have skills doesn't mean you get favor. That doesn't mean you can't get favor, you can get favor. But it's not a guarantee. So going for skills doesn't guarantee favor. Going for wisdom doesn't give you bread. Being strong doesn't make you win the battle. Being swift doesn't mean you win the race. Amen. And say so understanding doesn't give, give you what? Riches. Let's go there and read together. Let's all go. I'll return and I saw under the word is all. That the race is not for what? Nor the battle for the strong. Neither yet bread for what? Nor yet riches for men of understanding. Not yet favor to men of skill. 
But what happens to them all? I say, what happens to them all? What we call time and chances there is called opportunity. Everybody will have one. You will have one. You will meet somebody someday. You get your one land somebody someday. Somebody will offer this to you. You enter a different country. You will always have it. Wherever you are right now, there are opportunities for you there. Whether you're going to see it and use it depends on your ability. And then you come back and say, oh, oh God Almighty, I'm trusting you to buy me a car. I'm trusting you to help me, but the money hasn't come. And God will tell you, I gave you opportunity. But you couldn't see. Because while you are back, you have not developed ability to use opportunity. Many people lose their favor. They lose their future. Because when the opportunity came, they can't see. They don't know how to engage. And all of this depends on your mental discipline. I'm going to show you how that works out. Amen. You must be disciplined to be able to see opportunities, engage it. And you build that today. Someone is in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I lay emphasis. I lay emphasis on investment, on learning, and on discipline. Say investment. Say learning and discipline. Say investment, learning, and discipline gives me my future. Amen. You do that today. That's why I kept telling you of this church, wait and see. Five years. You better wake up now. You think going to learn all of this in the school? Wait and see. God have already sent help your way. Learn today. So you will not be learned tomorrow. I say learn today. So you will not be learned tomorrow. I say learn today. Take your note. Learn now. Because your tomorrow is now. Your tomorrow is today. It's in your learning. It's in your learning. It's in your discipline. It's in your investment. Those three things. And you will be strength. You will be fit. And you will have the abilities to use opportunities. You can be a millionaire in three days, in three hours. You can be, your, your life story can change in one day. All it takes is for God you to see the opportunity, engage, and use it. And this will turn around for you. But not everybody uses the opportunity. They waste it. But when it comes, they are not ready. You hear, I'm not ready. That's not for me. I can't do that. I'm not, I'm tired. Because where they refuse to train, they refuse to be disciplined. Many wasted opportunities in this life today. They are result of what we call human weaknesses. You just can't get up on time. You just can't go over your job again. You just cannot stop sleeping at 12 a.m., at 12, at 12 noon. You just don't know how to talk. You don't know how to communicate. You never learned it. You are a waster. You took things for granted. You just don't know how to hold your tongue. All of those women's weaknesses are the reasons why many opportunities are wasted. But all of those things are tied to your beginning, to your learning of discipline. They are tied to your personal discipline. In discipline will magnify your human weaknesses. And when the opportunity comes, you can hold it. Because you just don't know what to do, how to do it. You sleep in the afternoon. 
And when your father said, get up, go to school, you say, I'm, I, I, I'm tired, don't, 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 don't trouble me, don't, 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 let me enjoy my life, I want to sleep, I want to sleep. Then you go, keep, keep on sleeping, keep on sleeping, keep on sleeping. Then one day you went to school, you graduated from school, and you are very successful, and you get a job. Mm-hmm. And that time, so be awake in the afternoon comes, then you can't, you can't stop. And then your boss will find you and say, why are you sleeping in the afternoon? You are fired. No, no, you have skills, you are intelligent, but you are indisciplined. You are indisciplined. You don't know how to talk. It's not when you get married. No. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't learn that habit of bad mountain, gossiping, when you get married. No, no. You took them into your marriage. Those weaknesses came into your marriage. Because why? You never place emphasis on discipline. You never place emphasis on discipline. Those who hold their future, those who don't fall from the top, they are the ones who have managed their weaknesses when they are young. Whatever will make you fall from the top will grow with you. All those stories of your great man of God, mighty man of God, fornicating. No, no, no. They didn't just start to fornicate. They've been fornicating when they were kids. Amen. But all of these weaknesses are tied to indiscipline. It's in the name of Jesus. Mental discipline, Lord, impart me. Say amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen. Say amen. Number one, mental discipline will help you to break tired mindedness. Procrastination. Laziness. Slothfulness. Inconsistencies. Confusion and etc. With mental discipline, you can say no and remain no. You can say no to instant gratification. You can say no to immediate gain. You can say no to body pleasure. You can say no to mental pleasure or to social pleasure. People are fired from office today because they are addicted to their phone. Because they can't say no. Somebody was caught in the office watching pornography. Very intelligent man. And was, he, got, he got fired. No, 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 no. The problem was not the pornography because he couldn't say no. So he had to still watch it in that part in the office. See people come to church, they come with their phone, and they sit down at the back of the church. They still cannot say no to the temptation of just enjoying the mental pleasure from those uh, um, TikTok, Instagram. Somebody will be on the phone for three hours, clicking from video to videos. No, your life is going. You are wasting away. You are spending time on things that are not relevant to your destiny. In about three, four years, you will now realize you spend three hours every day. So every seven, three times seven, 24, what? That's 20, that, three times eight, that's what? That's 24. So every eight days, you have lost one day of your lifetime. You are, you are giving it to internet. And what have you gone back? Nothing. You're just a spectator. Enjoying those who are making you to laugh. They are making money. You are laughing. They are making money. You are laughing. Oh, what a wonderful click. No, you can spend time socially, but you must get to a point where you can say to yourself, no. That depends on mental discipline, mental strength will make you know when to say no and say no. 
It helps you to keep your schedule, to keep your time and your word. You have to be mentally strong. See, I've only found out the name of Jesus. I receive mental strength from mental discipline. So I receive mental strength. That's what the Bible said that you cannot afford. You must know the difference between what is expedient, what is expedient, and what is lawful. And you must be able to say, no, this is not lawful. This is expedient. I will not give myself to be under the power of anything. To be able to say no, it's called mental strength. That mental strength is received, is received through mental discipline. Can I hear an amen? It's received through mental discipline. You must be mentally disciplined. You are a great man. You have destiny. Your future depends on your discipline. It's time to get up. I say it's time to get up. It's time to what? Get up. Many great leaders in life, or what they call success in life, one thing is common to them all. About 15 strength I taught you sometime last year about success, I mean, I mean success strength. But for great leaders or great success, one thing is common. They are very resolute. Say resolute. They are resolute. They are resilient. And they are resolved. Say resolute. They are resolute people. They are resilient. And they are resolved. Say amen. Amen. It's not about having something. It's about keeping them. Amen. People have come to me. They have great vision. They have this. They have this job. That's not the point. I know somebody who has started three churches in three years. And they're all gone. Because it is not just, oh, I got a new. You can get everything. But, but can you keep it? Great leaders are resolute. What is resolution? It means you are determined. Say determination. They are determined. You are determined. Your heart is straight on your focus. Isaiah said, I mean, as I said, my face like a flint. Your face like a flint. You are determined. Because you are going to face the wind. You're going to go through storms. And you can't afford to go back. Sometimes in your life, it's too late to go back. It's too late to go back. One of my sons called me and said, Oh, what do you think, Papa, about, my, about, about our marriage? I said, yes. I said, <clears throat> he said do, you, do you approve divorce? I said, listen, whatever you do is your choice. But as far as I'm concerned, you are a failure. You can marry whoever you want to marry. You can do what you want to do. You can break the law. You can complain. But in my own book, you are still a failure. In that respect. In that respect. You can succeed in mathematics and fail in English. But as far as money is concerned, you haven't got the strength to hold it. So I cannot guarantee whoever you marry. You won't. In fact, according to statistics, second marriages divorce, the rate of divorce in second marriages is far higher than the first ones. Why? Because they have not learned why the first one broke apart. They just want to blame somebody else and jump into a new one because it's convenient to be lazy. It's convenient to be in discipline and it's convenient not to, to address yourself. But you soon find out that the problem is you. That's why the studies show the same thing. The second one is always they break up faster than even the self first one. It's recorded. Because you have to deal with your personal 
indiscipline. If you are not resolute in life, you have to be resolute. Say resolute. Determined to make it a success. You have to be determined before you began the building that will finish it. Or else you won't finish. Determined. And then let's say resilient. Say resilient. Resilient means you are able to withstand. You are able to overcome difficulties. In the midst of challenges, you are not breaking, you are not looking at it, you are not breaking. You are enduring. It's endurance of pain. That is why you can fast. That's why you can read your Bible over and over again because you are resilient. There are many believers today who have not even read their Bible one time over. Because why, as soon as they get to the Bible to start to read it, then sleep comes. Then the TV comes. But unless you are resilient, you can't say no. You will give in to what is not important and then your time and your energy, money is wasted. Then later on in life, I will ask you. But I pray today, God will raise you resilient, strong leaders in Jesus' name. Never giving in, never giving up. Resolved means your mind is made up. There is no great leader whose mind was not made up before they began to lead. No. There was no project. I didn't have a plan. And I was none of them that was not attacked. There is no great marriage that never went through turbulence. Not one. No great church, nothing in this world. So the thing that you're going to have it all easy, it dependent on your resolve, your resilience, and your resolution. Say in the name of Jesus. And all those three, listen to me, all those three depends heavily on your mental strength. Mental strength. Say in the name of Jesus, I'll receive mental strength. By the Holy Ghost. Say, so I receive mental strength by the Holy Ghost. I cannot hear your amen. Number two, mental strength will prevent your mind from being hijacked by Satan. It will prevent your mind. You see, your mind and your soul goes together. And every evil spirit in the world today is attracted to soul. They want your soul. Demons are loving. It's just like sugar is to ant, so are demons to souls. So they want to lose your mind, live in your mind. They can't wait. To find a loose soul to that touch to and possess. But mental discipline will prevent Satan or demons from blinding your mind or holding your mind or using your mind or possessing your mind. There are many believers today, their problem is not because no, it's not because they don't have a good heart. Or they are not going to church. The problem is that they are not disciplined mentally. And so they don't know when to say no to Satan. They don't know when Satan comes. And now Satan comes to possess, blind, oppress. There are too many believers today who pray in tongues but who are living today with a carnal mind. You can be a child of God living carnally for the rest of your Christianity. For you to switch from carnal mind to spiritual mind, it takes a regular schedule of meditation which requires mental discipline. You won't be spiritually minded overnight. No. You won't be. You can be a singer 
a preacher who is carnally minded, carnally minded. Let me show you some scriptures, amen? Read Romans chapter 5, verse 5 to 8. Romans chapter 8, from verse 5 to 8. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I take full possession of my mind. I'm in control of my mind by the Holy Spirit through mental discipline. Amen. You will not be spiritually minded overnight. It takes mental discipline to switch from carnal mind. Or hence, you will always be an ungodly believer. Ungodly believer. Ungo there are many ungodly believers. It doesn't mean you are not gifted. You are not. An you are anointed. You are gifted. But the way you think is still in entrenched in tradition. You are not yet renewed. Your mind is not renewed. And so you are still. Po is there still a possibility for you to serve Satan or Satan to speak through your mouth because your mind is not under your control? But somebody say, "Man, I receive." Say, "I receive." I receive. Dominion over my mind. Can I hear that? Allow that? Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to, verse 5 to 7. Let's go. Let's all read it together. Let's go. They, he's talking to believers. He said, They that are after what? What did they mind? They mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, what do they mind? What does that mean? You are a child of God. What, is your, what are you minding now? What are you Can you say what I'm minding now? What is at the center of my thought now are things of the spirit? Then if you can say so, then you have made a decision. It was a choice. You fought a battle. You made a choice between things of the flesh and things of the spirit. Look verse 6 quickly. To be what? To be what? No, it doesn't mean you are going to die physically. It means you will not enjoy the life of God. How many, how many believers go to church every day and go back home the same? How many go to church every day and they're just like, it doesn't make a difference. They are there for their parents. They are there because they have no choice. Just change their atmosphere. Put them in New York. I know I, I, I have a son who's no longer in church every day now. Just change your atmosphere. You would think he's born in church, he's going to grow in church, but just change the atmosphere. Because it's, it's not, not mentally disciplined to make a choice between the things of the spirit and the things of the flesh. But if you mind spiritual uh, kind of things, you die. You just die. It doesn't mean you are not born again. It simply means in this life, you are not enjoying the life of God. We still go to heaven? Yes. You used to be saved? Yes. You still enjoy mercy? Yes. We are not enjoying the life that Christ has brought you. I mean, because it takes your mind to be on spiritual stuff. Somebody say amen. And to be able to switch from carnality to spirituality, it requires mental discipline. You won't happen overnight. It's a choice you've got to make. Say amen. Let's read to verse 7, yeah? Yeah. It's not of the law of God. Read Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 for me. Second Corinthians chapter 4. From verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 3. Let's read. Let's go. Now I said, if our gospel is eight. Come on, follow me. If our gospel is what? 
Who is he heading to? To them that are lost. Who are the lost? Okay. The gospel is eat. The gospel is eat to them. I mean, God is speaking everywhere now. There's gospel everywhere. But some people today will never hear. God's going to speak tomorrow. God, why is your world conf- why do your world going in darkness? No. The gospel is in the world. God speaks in the church. But he said, if that gospel is not obvious to some people, he said they are lost. But who are those who are lost? Look at verse 4. To whom who? Who? The God of this world has done what? Blinded, blinded, blinded. Satan will not blind your mind. Okay, if Satan can blind the mind of people to the gospel, then what other thing is he blinding your mind to? If Satan can actually blind the mind to the gospel, do you think only the gospel is blinding the mind to? No. So how do you prevent Satan from blinding your mind? It's called mental strength. You got to know when Satan is trying to blind. He's trying to blind. So when you are mentally strong, I refuse to be blinded. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ through mental discipline, may your inner eyes open up in Jesus' name. Read Colossians chapter 1 verse 21 for me. Now, take note of that phrase. You that were sometimes alienated and were call them what? Friends in their mind? Enemies in their mind by wicked works. Enemies. Enemies. Can you be a child of God and still be enemies of God? Yeah. You go to church, but your thought, your mind is not under your control. Do you know that even Peter was walking with Jesus and Satan still spoke through him in church. The best church in town. The greatest pastor. Number one pastor. Jesus Christ. Peter was there with him. And there's a will of God for him to go and die on the cross. And Peter said, Master, you don't need to die. It's not a good thing for you to die. Why would you want to die? Talking about death is a bad stuff. I mean, come on, look at it, master. You don't die. Only devil dies. Only Bible dies. Because Peter does not know the will of God, the plan of God. His mind is wrapped up in the culture, in the tradition, in the things of man. He spent all his life learning fishery, how to fish. Good is God. God is good. That is Peter's theology. Peter would have called, called uh, 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 Rebecca a cheat. The mother of a cheat. Why will you connive with your son to steal your brother's blessing? That's Peter's mentality. Because they take away God from their thought. They put God in their, in, in, in their psychology. God is not the creator. They put God in their system. 
as far as they are concerned, their definition is God has to obey what our rule. So Rebecca, how could you connive with, with, with Jacob? That is not a good motherhood. That's not what God said about Rebecca. Because she was the one that understood the vision. She knew the destiny. She was punished by God to do what is right. So that the will of God be done. If Rebecca have mis been misled by ungodliness, we will not have Israel today. So somebody spend time to know God and it's called godliness. And to do that, you got to be mentally disciplined. Say mental discipline. To give yourself straight into the word of God. It's called meditation. Say a bigger amen. amen. You cannot afford to leave your mind to Satan. Enemies of God in your mind. Look at the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 15. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I will never allow the devil a chance in my soul. In my mind. Why? Because you don't want an enemy to think through your mind. That's why Christ said, possess ye your soul in your place. You possess your soul. You are the owner, controller of your own mind. That is what mental discipline does for you. There are some of us in the church, it's not easy to do something wrong. Because you are thinking straight. You are thinking well. You are thinking in line with the mind of God. You spend time in meditation. And to be able to do that, it takes you to have a regular schedule, which you keep to, to change your mind. You came thinking this is right, but you know, for a while, after seeing the Bible, after a long time, this is wrong. How did you arrive there? Because you were disciplined enough to engage in a daily de de devotion. You possess your soul. And then truth came and you are washed by the water of the world. Somebody say amen. amen. But if you are not mentally disciplined, you will never have a regular meditation life. All you have is religion and church attendance. Religion and church attend. Why your mind is still wasting away? Say God forbid. Say God forbid. So I'll give my mind to meditation because I need my mind to think like God thinks. Amen. To do that, I pray this morning we'll all desire mental discipline by the Holy Ghost. I know maybe your father, mother have not been able to help, but the Holy Ghost can help. For me, I cry for the Holy Ghost. Discipline me mentally. This, don't, I'm open to it. Wake me up at 3 a.m. to meditate in your word. No, no, no. I didn't begin by believing God's word the way I do now. No. I believe rubbish. I believe useless stuff. about many stuff. But I got my mind renewed. And that exercise requires mental discipline. Because things are going to distract you. You're going to get distracted. It's called maturity. It's called spirituality. It's called exercising yourself in godliness. And children can do it. You don't have to be whole. You can have 30 minutes a day where you minister to your own mind. Keep it. Whatever will not make you keep it, kill it. It's called mental discipline. Amen. See, so mental discipline will help your meditation in Jesus' name. Your mind is needed for your future. Amen. Don't let the devil hijack it. When you see people talk anyhow, behave anyhow, look, look at Luke chapter 5, verse 15. Let's go there quickly. Luke 5, 15. Are we there? Somebody, please put on the screen for me. Luke 
Oh, okay. I think I want to show you Mark 5.50. I don't, look, let me be very sure what I'm looking for. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. They came to Jesus. And what did they say? You know the story in that place that there was a man that was possessed with an evil spirit. Right? He was possessed with an evil spirit. What was the problem with him? When the evil spirit left him, what happened to him? He came back to his right mind. That's demonic possession. When people talk, it's not every possession is of the flesh. It's not every possession is of the spirit. As a child of God, you can never be possessed with an evil spirit, evil spirit in your spirit. It's not possible. You got the Holy Ghost dwell there. But will you allow the devil to talk through your mouth? Have you not seen people who come to church and preach and go out and do something silly? Or fight? They both sing and praise God in church. But listen, their, their mind, their heart is white, but their soul is still as dark. Wicked imagination. Perversion. Evil thought. Most narcissists, most evil leaders, their problem is devils in their mind. After deliverance, they'll come to their right senses. Say, in the name of Jesus, say, I'll receive authority to possess my soul in Jesus' name. It's called mental discipline. So mental discipline will prevent you, will prevent Satan from taking hold of your mind, from blinding your mind, or from possessing it. And that means you are going to be disciplined to say no to Satan. Not only to food. Not only to things of the world. To Satan. To Satan. You will, listen, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't matter. Your color, your title does not prevent Satan from coming your way. You are, you are a man of God anointed. You, 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 you could raise it there yesterday. Man, it doesn't stop, so that's it coming to your mind. And if you are not mentally disciplined, you will not know how to say no. May you never live a double life in your life in Jesus' name. And finally, let me quickly round up on what is mental discipline. Number one, ability to withstand pressure. Afflictions, deprivations, denials. When bullies want to bend you, when to break you, when to make you compromise, when to make you backtrack on what you have said, they, they will have to first break your resolve, break your will. And that, but when you are able to say, no, in spite of what I'm going through, I will not compromise. It doesn't matter what to tell me. I will not. It's called mental strength. Hallelujah. That was what we found in Job. Job said, though he slay me, I will say trust him. Though he slay me, I will trust him. There are some of you that will never backslide. You will never marry an unbeliever. You will never steal or cheat. It doesn't matter the affliction or the pain in the world. You are mentally fortified. Mentally strong. Why? You are mentally disciplined to fortify your mind. You spend time daily building mental strength through a regular schedule in the word of God. So you can withstand the pressure. You can withstand denial. I've seen many of God's children who are because they don't have fruit of the womb on time, they were forced to go to idolatry. Why would you lose your soul 
because you want to have a child. But they could do that because of mental weakness. Abusers will always break you. Before they can break you, they have to break your mind first. And once your mind is broken, your world will break. You can never have a breakthrough with a break mind, a broken mind. For you to break through in life, you have to have a mental strength. Someone say mental strength. Amen. That's why Job said, I will, I will dead trust him, even though he slays me. You'll find that in the book of Job 13, verse 15. Amen. The Bible says you and I shall receive the devil in faith. Number two, mental discipline is holding to the word of truth. Amen. Holding to the word of truth. Holding on to the word of truth. Holding on to the word of truth. What you know is true. The Bible says the word of the Lord is true from the very beginning. Say amen. Once you know it is true, hold on to it. Hold it. Say hold on. Say hold on. Let me ask you a question. Why must you hold on to the word of truth? Why must you hold on? Minister Eke, tell me quickly. Why must you hold on to the word? Read the book of Job quickly for me. 27 verse 6. And from there, let me hear you answer that question. Job 27 verse 6. And Lamentation 3.21. Quickly. All your place. Let's all read together. Church, let's go. Okay, I hold fast to my righteousness. May you hold fast to yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold fast. Say hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold, hold. You see, mental strength is holding to what you know is true. Amen. The word of the Lord is true from the very beginning. Mm. Philippians 2, 13 says, hold fast. Hold fast. Why do you have to hold fast? You know it's true. You know my God will save me. My God will not leave me alone. The Bible says my God shall supply. Say amen. Amen. It's true. I say it's true. Amen. I say it's true. Amen. I say it's true. Amen. The Lord has healed me. It's true. You have to hold on to the word in your mind. Why? Because your heart depends on it. Your hope depends on it. Amen. Amen. If you don't hold on to something in your mind that is true, you will shift. You have to recall to mind. It's called meditation. Say recoil. Record. Say recoil. Record. You have to recall to mind all the time that God will see me true. You have to remember his faithfulness. Remember the goodness of the Lord based on the word. The second you do that, amen, amen. your hope is revived. Amen. Your faith is standing. Your heart is revived. And your word will not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, Say, Heavenly Father, I will recall to mind. I will spend time, a lifetime of meditation in your word. I receive grace. 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 Stand to your feet. I receive grace. Please come forward. I receive grace. We have got the service started. I receive grace. 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 To hold on. To hold on. I receive grace. To possess my mind. I receive grace. I receive grace. To say no. To say that. To pleasure that are unhealthy. I receive grace for mental strength needed for leadership and success. I receive grace. I receive grace to say no. To 
you say no. Say no. To deny myself. To deny myself. I receive grace. To say no. To affliction. From breaking me. From breaking my. From breaking me. From breaking my resolve. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. I receive mental strength. Mental strength. Mental strength. Mental strength. I am open to mental discipline right now. Holy Spirit, impart me with mental strength. The mental strength, I am open to mental discipline. I refuse to break. I refuse to break. My mind is mine. I will never say what the devil wants me to say. I will never do what the devil wants me to do. My mind is mine. My mind is mine. I reject pressure from abusers. From abusers. From oppressors. In the name of Jesus. I reject. I reject. I reject. I reject pressure. I reject pressure to pass life. To fornicate. I reject pressure. I reject it. I reject it. I reject it. I hold on to the world of life. In the name of Jesus. I will never lose hope. I will never lose my faith. I recall to mind. I remember his faithfulness. His loving kindness. God's love. God's love to me is great. I will never be shaken. Make a strength. It's mine. I am open to mental discipline by the Holy Ghost. I am strong mentally. I am strong mentally. I will never pray. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say